It's, you know, making sure the game plan is in a situation that we have to communicate as much as we might have to in some situations, like you can do at home. So you have to kind of pick and choose what you can run and make sure we can execute it. You know, I think that uh, we settled down after a while in the atmosphere once we kind of got used to it and we're better. But it's always challenging, even just if you can't hear it, just the tackles being able to get off on the right time, right? But I think it's 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 just really just practicing in it, but it's also understanding game plan wise, making sure we don't have these guys having to try to make too many calls up front when it's going to be hard to hear for sure. Putting something together on the high school playing careers of the staff. <laughs> Can you re kind awesome. of recap your high school playing career for us? Man, it was. This it was not glamorous, I can tell you that Where right was now. it, position? I, I went to Gerard Catholic High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, sophomore year, I started on the varsity. We were ranked number one preseason. And we finished, uh, I believe, like three and five or four and six, somewhere in that world. It was really disappointing. We had a head coach that had resigned. A new coach came in, changed everything. Not putting it on him. It just, it's what happened. And then we had a change in our administration and we lost half the population of our school. And so I was a knucklehead and I stayed. And I probably should have went, but I stayed, right? And said, hey, we're gonna keep fighting through this. And it was it was interesting. You were, we had, I believe, uh, somewhere between 300 and 350 kids. And we're in the middle of Phoenix, so it's not like, and we were playing schools with 1,500 to 2,000. So it, it was uh, not good you as were far no as wins and losses. So I played offense and defense, so, I was a starting center as a sophomore. I played some D-line. Then my junior year, I played O-line and D-line. And if you remember, this is a long story, we got time. <laughs> so that's when the, the Bears and the Fridge came out, right? So you had a big guy in the backfield. So our coach was like, let's put Cap back there. And so by, by probably pure luck, it was a short yardage and I popped it for like 40 yards, right? So now he thinks, well, let's just make him the running back. So, so then I was the fullback running back, right? And then I blew up my ankle on the third practice of that next week. So just kind of finished up there, went into senior year, wanted me to be the fullback. I cut some weight and you have nobody blocking for you. You know, God help those kids. We had young, we had, we had, it was just a tough thing, man. I think at the end of my senior year, we had 18 guys on the varsity. So it was a, it was a challenging experience, but I learned a lot about hard work and perseverance and I have a lot of respect for the guys that played with me that weren't going on to college to play that were willing to endure all that. Last question, and I'll let them get back to Alabama. What about scholarship offers? you have a few? So, yeah, we, we as I said, we weren't very good. I was getting recruited and, and things weren't going well. So then I was like, you know, I had some offers to some smaller schools and I was like, you know, the, the community college football programs in Phoenix were pretty big then. So I decided to go to one of those to increase my my uh, possibilities, which I was able to do. Okay. Sorry to ask about Elijah like Pritchard at all. Uh, what would you say for him or some of the coaching points right now and what he needs to do to take the next step in this game? Yeah, just, you know, consistency is really the big thing. You know, like you'll watch him and he'll have some really good plays, you know, good sets, good with his hands. You know, I think I was looking, there's four guys he's had to block so far in the season and projected to be first rounders. And, and he's done some really good things. But then the minute, his, his set isn't quite right or he leans a little bit or doesn't use his hands, you're going to get exposed. So, you know, that's the thing. When you're out on that island 40 times a game or whatever it is, consistency, man, is really important. But it's also you got to be able to change things up to not give him the same look every time. So it's it's definitely a challenge. But the thing about it is he's shown he can do it. Just need more consistency from him. We kind of saw Caden, the light bulb, go off, you know, last year, maybe around this time. Do you see that with Elijah? And maybe is it kind of clicking a little bit more for him lately? Or? Yeah, I don't know. You know, that that's hard for me to say when, you know, there wasn't the consistency we wanted uh, on Saturday. So I think, like I said, he, he has shown the ability to do it. It's just a matter of him really locking in mentally and being consistent in his play to be able to get to that. You know, it's just the same thing like you talked about Proctor. We watched his film from last year. Me and him even watched some of the sets together and the things he was doing wrong. And, you know, sometimes it's when you start losing some reps, right, it's, it's really hard mentally to bounce back. You start panicking. You start getting out of your out of your technique and form. And so that's the biggest thing is just why did you get beat and let's figure out how to help you. And I think that's that's where we need to go with Pritch. How big is the second bye week in terms of, like, 
being maybe the final pit stop, you know, in the season, right? Yeah, it's huge. You know, it was it was a um, pretty big stretch right there of ups and downs, a lot of emotionally draining uh, situations. And then, you know, guys are getting beat up, so it's always good to get that, just a chance for them to get their bodies a little healthier, um, for us to really maybe focus some on just some fundamentals and techniques that you don't get as much time to do sometimes when you're game planning and things like that. But uh, I think it came at a great time, and I, um, I'm anxious to see the, the improvement that we'll have in the next week and a half. Kind of bouncing off that, do you feel like the performance on Saturday was what your unit and maybe the whole team needed going into the bye where they played well, shut out an opponent, but there's still things to kind of work on? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's something to build off of, right? And I think we're capable of running the ball at, at a high level, and so we were able to show some of that. And it's just like anything else, right? You're going to have some runs that aren't great. Uh, sometimes it's just good defense. Sometimes it's on us. But if you can start to wear people down, and those smaller runs become bigger runs, and I thought we were able to do that on Saturday, which is which is something as an old line that you really, that's what you love to do, right? That's that's what it's all about. You when know, there was an added level of physicality last week in practice. Tyler Booker played a big part in that. Is there anyone else that you've seen step up this week? Well, you know, today was more of a fundamental day, so we challenged all of them. You know, Book's always been kind of our leader, and I challenged Book to challenge the guys more last week, and he responded, and I think that's a, that's a good thing. Whenever they hear from their peers, I think it's even more effective, right? So um, you probably ask me that next week. I'll give you a better answer, so we'll see who steps up. Sounds good. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.